From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is the LeBlanc family from Halifax, Nova Scotia, for the repose of the souls of their sisters. Mabel Marshall, who was called home January the 17th, and Evangeline Woodburn, who was called home February the 9th. The second is the De Ella family from Etobicoke, Ontario, in memory of the 17th anniversary of the death of Roger De Ola and the 25th anniversary of the death of Virginia Dungo. Mrs. De Ella and her family are here with us today. On behalf of all those across Canada who are participating in this celebration, I welcome you and thank you and the LeBlanc family for your generous gift. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. The high priest... Hilkiah said to Shaphan the secretary, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. When Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, he read it. Then Shaphan the secretary came to the king and reported to the king, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of the workers who oversee the house of the Lord. Shaphan the secretary informed the king, the priest Hilkiah has given me a book. Shaphan then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded the priest Hilkiah, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Akbor son of Micaiah, Shaphan the secretary, and the king's servant Asiah, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our ancestors did not obey the words of this book, to do according to all that is written concerning us. Then the king directed that all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem should be gathered to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him went all the people of Judah, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests, the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. He read in their hearing all the words of the Book of the Covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord, keeping his commandments, his decrees, and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. All the people joined in the covenant. The word of the Lord. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. 
Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I will absorb it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn my heart to your decrees and not to selfish gains. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Turn my from looking at vanities, give me life in your ways. See, I have longed for your precepts, in your righteousness give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O oh Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. says the Lord, my branches bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. The Gospel of the Lord. The passage we heard a few moments ago from the second book of Kings offers an account of a decisive moment in the history of Israel and in the life of its leaders. Although many of them were moral and religious failures, Josiah, the king at the heart of today's reading, is remembered and celebrated as someone who dedicated himself to a serious reform and renewal of the religious life of his people. He is said to have done what was right in the sight of the Lord and to have walked in the way of his ancestor, David. The stimulation for his reforming efforts came from the discovery in the Temple of Jerusalem of what today's reading describes as the Book of the Law or the Book of the Covenant. In all probability, the book was here referred to contain the whole or part of what we know as the book of Deuteronomy, the last of the five books that make up the Pentateuch. Its title means Second Law. In it, Moses, on the eve of the entry of the people into the land of Canaan, 
recapitulates the story of Israel from Egypt and God's sealing of a covenant with them at Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments, as well as other laws and rules covering various aspects of individual and community life, spell out implications for, the, for Israel of what it means to be God's people, the people of the covenant. The king, on hearing the words of the book, tears his clothes. What he has heard is brought home to him in a dramatic way, the failure of his predecessors, as well as of himself and his contemporaries to live up to the commandments that were once commitments that were once made in their name. Gathering the people together in the temple, he reads in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant. He then renews the covenant and recommits himself and the people to living by the commandments and decrees that he has just read to them. The incident recalls the famous scene of Moses reading the original book of the covenant to the people gathered at the base of Mount Sinai. It also looks forward to the solemn reading of what was probably the whole of the Torah or Pentateuch by the scribe Ezra to the people who had returned from exile in Babylon. The reading of the Torah reminds the people who they are as God's people and the kind of life that they are called to live. These and incidents like them underline the importance for the Israelites and for the Jewish people after them of what Jesus often refers to as the law and the prophets. What was and is true for Jews is also true for us. In our book, our Bible, which includes both the, the Jewish scriptures and the New Testament, we hear the story of what God has done and is doing for us and what he asks of us in return. Over the centuries, Jews have continued to read their Bible in the context of the synagogue liturgy. In it, they hear the word of God challenging and encouraging them, offering them forgiveness and consolation, inviting them to walk in his ways. We do the same as we listen to the scriptures proclaimed at daily mass. Through the human words of the evangelists, Paul and the other authors of the New Testament, we hear the risen Christ speaking to us, consoling and challenging us. Over the last two and a half weeks, the gospel for daily mass has been taken from Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount. If the gospels taken together or individually can be described as the book of the covenant, the covenant that God has made with us in Jesus, the Sermon on the Mount offers a summary of its moral teaching. It presupposes the proclamation by Jesus of the breaking into the world, in him, of the kingdom of God, with all that it implies in terms of forgiveness and grace. It then goes on to spell out the kind of qualities and virtues, attitudes, and actions that ought to mark the life of a follower of Jesus. Every time I read the Sermon on the Mount, I, found, I find myself enormously challenged. My life falls short in many ways of the ideal it presents. It calls us, for example, to love not only our family and friends, but also those who get on our nerves, those who live in ways that are different from our own, those whom we might incline to think of as our enemies. Of such people, Jesus says, do to others as you would have them do to you. The sermon also challenges us to strive for purity of heart, to not only be generous and disciplined and prayerful, 
but to be such things for the right reasons. It challenges us to thirst for justice and to work for peace, to be concerned about and seek the well-being of the broader community in which we live. I've often been struck by how often in the course of Christian history, individuals have had their lives transformed by reading or hearing a particular passage from Scripture. I think of St. Anthony, the father of Christian monasticism, of St. Augustine, one of Christianity's greatest theologians, of St. Francis, a man who seemed to his contemporaries to embody in a unique way the person and teaching of Jesus. Our life and the life of the Church cannot help but be renewed and enriched by our turning again and again to our book and by hearing in it the voice of God consoling and challenging us, calling us to a more authentic Christian life. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that are sharing in this Eucharist will make us more open to hearing God's word speaking to us in Scripture. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. For the millions of refugees and displaced persons throughout the world, that they will receive the support they need to survive and flourish. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us, that we will become sensitive, more sensitive, to the challenges of climate change and do what we can to counteract it. Let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and for those who have died recently, especially victims of war and terror, that they will be brought to eternal life in God. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. <laughs> By the mingling of this water and wine, become partakers of his divinity, became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. <laughs> Gracious God, wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. O God, who in one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. 
And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, indeed of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Say Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. Keep Daily Mass on television, and you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation. Oh, yeah, we raise this up.